So when it comes to external heart rate monitors, Polar makes some of the most accurate in the industry, including the Polar H10, the Polar H9, and the Polar Verity Sense. And these are all sensors that I trust and also use as points of reference when comparing heart rate accuracy with other devices. But why do they have three different products? Well, that's what we're gonna go over in today's video are the differences between these to help you decide which one's gonna be right for you. So before we get into the differences between these, let's talk about why you may need an external heart rate monitor. So wrist-based optical heart rate sensors that are found on smartwatches and sports watches, well, they're getting better and better every day, but the reality is the wrist isn't necessarily the most ideal place to capture a heart rate, but that's what we're dealing with because that's where we wear our watches. In general, wrist-based optical heart rate sensors do a good job in tracking heart rate for stuff like running, indoor cycling, and some road biking. Basically anything that doesn't necessarily involve a lot of wrist flexion or a lot of arm movement. There are ways to get more accurate heart rate from wrist-based optical heart rate sensor, and I actually just made a video on that topic, and I'll have that video linked down in the description below. But there's still certain types of activities that are simply very challenging for wrist-based optical heart rate sensors to track accurately, namely stuff like weight training, high-intensity interval training, as well as mountain biking. And that's where an external heart rate monitor comes into play, where these will provide you with the most accurate heart rate, so the training and performance feedback that you're receiving from your watch or fitness app is going to be as meaningful as possible. Okay, so now let's get into the differences between these. So first up, we have two different styles of heart rate monitors. So we have the Polar H10 and the Polar H9, and these are heart rate monitors that are designed to be worn around the chest, and they measure heart rate off of electrical signals signals from your body, or ECG. And then we have the Polar Verity Sense, and this uses an optical heart rate sensor, which is similar to what you find in a watch, and this shines light through your skin and measures heart rate through blood flow. But even though the Polar Verity Sense uses the same type of sensor that's found in a watch, the advantage that the Verity Sense has is that it's designed to be worn on the arm where there's more flesh for the sensor to work with, and that's where you're going to get more accurate results than the wrist. And then in terms of accuracy, in general, the chest heart rate sensors, the H10 and the H9, these will be the most accurate in pretty much all situations but there are some scenarios where they may not work quite as well. So there's gonna be situations where it's gonna be extremely cold out or if the strap is dry. And the Verity Sense is also a very accurate heart rate sensor, but since it's an optical heart rate sensor, there may be a delay in some situations like extremely quick changes in the heart rate where your heart rate may not be displayed in real time, where there may be like a one to four second delay with those really quick changes, but still it's a very accurate sensor. And beyond just the difference in the type of technology that these sensors use, there's gonna be an issue of comfort as well. So there's gonna be plenty of people that don't necessarily want to wear a chest heart rate monitor. And on the other hand, there's gonna be plenty of people that don't necessarily wanna wear something on the arm. So you have a couple different options. Options there. So now that we've gone over the differences between chest versus arm heart rate monitors, let's talk about the Polar H10 and the Polar H9 in a little bit more detail. So looping back to comfort really quick, the Polar H9 uses their soft strap, and as the name implies, it's a soft, stretchy strap in the material, it's nice and comfortable. You can adjust the length of it to your liking, and then it also attaches using a hook and loop. But with the Polar H10, that uses their Polar Pro strap, and with this strap, you'll notice these little grippy silicon dots, and these help keep the strap from shifting and slipping down, especially with those really intense workouts with a lot of movement. And the Pro strap that comes with the H10 uses a snap closure versus the hook on the soft strap, which comes with the H9, and I tend to find the snap closure on the Pro strap to be just slightly more convenient. Polar also claims that the Pro Strap has extra interference preventing electrodes on the strap that make it extremely sensitive to your heart signals, but I've actually had great results out of both the Soft Strap as well as the Pro Strap. You may notice though that the sensor area is a bit larger on the Pro Strap, so if it were to shift around while wearing it, it just has more contact area to work with. In addition, since it has those grippy silicon dots, it does stay more secure. But here's what's cool about these straps. These straps are interchangeable, so you can use a Polar H10 pod with a Soft Strap, and you can use a Polar H9 pod with a Pro Strap. So if you bought a Polar H9 and want to upgrade to the Pro Strap later, you can totally do that. And they do sell these straps separately from the pods. So other than the differences in the straps, the pods also do have some differences between them. So both of these can connect to pretty much any watch, bike, computer, or fitness app using Bluetooth or Ant Plus. In addition, both also can connect to compatible gym equipment using Gym Link, which uses a five kilohertz transmission frequency. The main difference here though is that the Polar H10 has two Bluetooth connections where the H9 has one. And I think for most people, one Bluetooth connection should be just fine, but where the two Bluetooth connections does come in handy with the H10 is that, let's say you're gonna be training on an indoor or cycling training platform like Zwift or something like that where you want to see your heart rate and you also want to pair your heart rate monitor with your watch that only pairs to Bluetooth external sensors. So examples of this would be stuff like Apple watches, Polar watches, the Chorus Vertex 2, as well as some other smart watches. 
However, where you may not need the two Bluetooth connections is if you have a watch or bike computer that can pair to Bluetooth as well as Ant Plus external sensors. So these include devices like Garmin's, uh, Wahoo's bike computers, as well as their rival smartwatch and previous generation chorus watches like the original Vertex and Apex Pro. Oh, and going back to the gym link feature really quick that both of these devices do have, it's just a convenient little feature where when you start a workout on a compatible piece of gym equipment, it basically will just automatically detect your heart rate sensor and start displaying that on the device. It's pretty cool. And then the other big difference between the H9 and the H10 is that the H10 can record heart rate data on the pod itself for one training session. So this could be especially useful if you don't want to or can't wear a watch for your workout. And the process for how this works is that you'll start your workout using the Polar Beat app when you have your H10 paired, then you can go and do your workout. And then once you're done with your workout, you'll go back to the Polar Beat app on your phone, stop the workout, and then the Polar Beat app will download the data off the H10. It's not necessarily the smoothest experience, but it works. And then for battery life, both the H10 and the H9 run off of a little CR2025 coin cell battery, and that battery can last up to about 400 hours of training. I usually train about six days a week for at least an hour per day, and I only have to change the batteries maybe like every 10 months or so, and changing the batteries actually is super, super easy. Oh, and lastly, the Polar H9 and the H10, they're both waterproof, but they aren't necessarily designed for swimming. However, the Polar Verity Sense is. So the Verity Sense is an optical heart rate sensor that shines light through your skin to measure heart rate through blood flow, and it's primarily designed to be worn on the arm. And in terms of comfort, the strap that they use for the Verity Sense is also a nice, comfortable strap and has a little Velcro closure so you can easily take it on or off. So just like the H9 and the H10, the Verity Sense can connect to both Bluetooth as well as Ant Plus devices. And similar to the H10, the Verity Sense also has two Bluetooth connections, but unlike the H10, it doesn't have the five kilohertz gym link transmission, so it won't work with those same types of gym equipment. The big difference here though with the Verity Sense is that it can store up to 600 hours of heart rate data on the pod itself, and it can be multiple sessions. And the process for how you do this is just a lot less cumbersome than the H10. So with the Verity Sense, all you have to do to record heart rate without a paired device is you just turn it on and then just press the button again to toggle it into one of the two offline modes, either just a regular recording mode or a dedicated swimming mode. And what's really cool about the Verity Sense with its swimming mode is that it can automatically track laps, distance, and time. So all you do is just make sure that it has the correct pool length specified in the device settings in the Polar Flow app, and it just does all that tracking automatically. It's actually pretty cool. And then to save either your swim or other type of offline activity, all you have to do is just to have your phone nearby when you go to turn it off, and you'll notice the light turn to blue, which means it's syncing with the app. And then from there, your activity just shows up like anything else in the Polar Flow app. And with swimming, you very well could just use the arm strap if you'd like, but they also include a special clip that attaches to your goggles where it can measure heart rate from your temple, which is surprisingly not a bad place to track heart rate. And then for battery life, the Verity Sense can last up to 30 hours, and they include this cute little USB charger where it just snaps into place. And then for pricing, the H9 runs 60 bucks, and the H10 and the Verity Sense both run 90 bucks. And I've got some links in the description below where you can pick any of these up if you're interested. And those are affiliate links, by the way, that do help support the channel without costing you anything additional. And it's just kind of a nice way of helping out if you found the information in this video to be useful, and I appreciate it. Anyhow, if you have any questions about anything I didn't cover in this video, make sure to leave those in the comments section down below. And on your way down there, if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.